How's it going everyone? Brian, Bry the Math Guy here. If you read the title, then you know what I'm going to be talking about. Now this isn't something that comes up a lot, especially when you're talking to a math person. They don't usually tell you about all the times they messed up really bad in math. But I think a lot of students like hearing these stories. I think it sort of demystifies the math major or the math person. It shows you that you can slip up and still have success down the road. So if you don't know me, I've been a math tutor for over seven years. I have a bachelor's degree in mathematics. I just got my master's degree in mathematics, but I really wasn't always on the top of my game. There were many times in those first few semesters that I struggled with and many students struggle with those introductory calculus courses. And so here's what happened. Uh, it was calculus three. So that right off the bat, that's always a, a tougher one for some people. Some find calc three easy, some find calc three a bit harder. And really this was one of the turning points in my uh, entire math career, curriculum, whatever you want to call it, because it taught me a very valuable lesson. And I, I hope it's a lesson that you can learn from my story without having to go through what I went through. So it was the first exam of the semester. It was the fall semester. It was my uh, first semester of the year. So back from summer. So I wasn't quite uh, up to practice. And I had also started two new jobs. So keeping that in mind. And I think I had a little bit of overconfidence because I had taken this professor once before. Again, this was Calc 3. I had him for Calc 2. And what happened was I essentially just let many things slip through the cracks. And I think this is what happens with a lot of students is they go in thinking they're very prepared when in reality, there are many things that probably should have been done differently. So right off the bat, Calc 3 has a few different notations than you're used to seeing in many of your other math classes. If you haven't taken a lot of physics or engineering classes like I had not, then the whole vector dot products, uh, these sort of things are very new to you for the first time. And so this notation totally tripped me up. I hadn't done enough work with simply the notation of the new math. And this is something you have to watch out for when you get into a math field that you're not used to is there's going to be some new notation that you're going to have to get used to, especially when it's put on exams without much context. And that sort of happened here. The questions had very little detail into what actually the professor wanted as an answer. Instead, it just used the notation and had an equal to sign. And this really threw me off because I didn't know exactly what this notation meant or I was mixing up what this notation meant. And so I ended up doing the wrong thing. And the thing was, it was a really easy question. You know, it was a it was a simple computation, a little bit of arithmetic, maybe some square rooting, but it really wasn't that bad. So that already set me down a bad path. And the farther I got into this exam, the more you realize how much you didn't pay attention to your notes. Notes are really important, especially because they're made by your professor. They're essentially saying, hey, this is what I want you to know. This is what I'm teaching you and this is what I'm going to test you on. So as a policy for me and after this exam, I always made sure I did my best to always know if there was anything in the professor's notes, I had a general idea of what it was, especially the theorems or the definitions or any important equations. These things are always need to know. You have to know these. And in this case, I just wasn't on the top of my game. I didn't have all of the equations and everything that I could just take and use at the drop of a hat, which is what I really needed to do in this case. And then I think what really, really grinds my gears is on the last page, it was just a whole bunch of computations. It was essentially a bunch of derivatives with a little bit of uh, vector stuff intertwined. And it should have been very straightforward, but just the algebra and the lots and lots of derivatives that involve this problem, it just tripped me up. And, and for whatever reason, I just 
couldn't quite get all the formulas and the derivatives to work together. It should have been fairly straightforward. And the worst part about it is the day before or a few days before he did a problem almost exactly like it. It had almost the exact same answer. And it's just one of those things that when your teacher spends so much time on a specific problem, a specific example, especially if it's a longer one, you might want to take a few extra looks at that. It's bound to even pop up some way or another on the exam. In this case, it was nearly identical. And so what happened was I ended up failing this exam and the professor curved it a little bit, but it was still basically a failing grade. <laughs> I saw this for what it was. It was one test. And I think that's what you have to really see when something like this happens to you. You have to see it for what it is, and you have to kind of own it a little bit and say, okay, you know, this is what I did to get this grade. How do I change that? And so going from that, realizing what happened and knowing what I had to do to turn it around, the next test was an A. In fact, it was a high A and I ended up doing decently well in the course. And so while it was a painful experience to go through, it actually helped me going forward because I never really made that same mistake in preparation again. In fact, in all of my grad school classes, I felt mostly very prepared for all of the exams because by that point, I'd really trained myself of how to study, how to study for math exams, and how to realize what kind of things your instructors are expecting. Anyway, that's just my little story. I handpicked this video just for you. You might want to watch it. I, I think it's going to be pretty good. And if you're into it, maybe you can hit this nice subscriber button. Sounds good to me. Have a great day.